I'm going to be relatively brief today because this is mainly a discussion about air. But I want to also point out, as we'll be discussing this, that vaccines also keep the air clean. In terms of the um, why we should be vaccinating people in school, what are the reasons to vaccinate people in school? The primary reason to use any vaccine is to try to prevent disease and those who are vaccinated. It's important for faculty and staff, and people have often said, well, why should we vaccinate the students? They'll be fine. In fact, as we've already heard, they're not always fine. They get sick as well. So we do the vac we recommend vaccination for all the people who are in the schools for their own personal benefit. We also recommend vaccination to help decrease the transmission of the pathogen, uh, both um, in real time by reducing the levels of pathogen uh, shedding in those who are uh, uh, infected despite being vaccinated, uh, to reduce the number of people who are infected and to limit the, the evolution of more dangerous and more transmissible variants. So we're also investing in the future uh, by vaccinating now. Uh, everyone has seen these clinical trials. The only point I want to make in the original clinical trials is they were not, um, they were not done with shortcuts. They were done uh, extremely uh, carefully and included 75 to 80,000 people. But since that time, uh, we've now seen over 180 million people receiving these mRNA vaccines uh, followed very closely uh, through the CDC's VAERS system. And there've been uh, very little in the way of uh, surprises uh, since that time in terms of safety. The efficacy of these vaccines continues to be extremely high in terms of preventing disease um, and preventing death. Uh, and you can see that not just in the uh, statistics, but just in looking at correlative data about where the disease is now um, exploding. It's exploding in parts of the US uh, where vaccine rates uh, have been lowest. Now, we've heard a lot about breakthrough cases, uh, and uh, I think it's an important point to, right, to, to discuss for two reasons. First is breakthrough cases are defined as people who get infected despite being vaccinated. These people aren't always cases because case means that someone is actually having symptoms. These are people who happen to be infected and may be shedding virus. As you can see in this, um, in the, um, uh, this graphic, uh, looking at the data from California, uh, vaccines are much more effective in terms of preventing people from becoming symptomatic uh, or dying. This is the uh, uh, protection rate, uh, 95 to 100%, but less effective in terms of uh, preventing them from becoming uh, infected without symptoms or mildly ill. And this is true of any vaccine. vaccine. Uh, they are much better at preventing disease than preventing transient infection uh, and, and shedding. We already know from the data that Kim showed you, uh, that Kim Prather showed you, that although early on uh, the transmission rates may be quite high, or the shedding rates may be quite high in vaccinated in green or unvaccinated people in red, that the area under the curve is much, uh, in terms of how much virus is shed, is much lower in those who are vaccinated because the immune system that has been teased by the prior vaccination kicks in very quickly and drives down the viral load. So this actually helps clean the air as well. You're doing this for yourself and for those around you. Side effects uh, are primarily those of uh, sore arms. We see that in uh, adults, we see that in, in kids, and uh, in some people uh, for a couple of days, uh, mild flu-like symptoms uh, that go away, sometimes requiring some Tylenol, but most of the time uh, being self-limiting. There are very rare side effects uh, that uh, are seen. The one that has been talked about most in uh, in adolescents uh, has been mainly in adolescent boys, and that is transient inflammation of the heart muscle or myocarditis that uh, occurs in about 50 per million uh, vaccinated kids. Uh, it lasts usually a day or two. Uh, it is occasionally associated with hospitalization, but really generally doesn't require medical intervention and is reversible. We see these same kinds of side effects, uh, but to a greater extent in terms of cardiac uh, effects in uh, children who get the full disease. Finally, should everyone wear masks in school? I think from what you've heard already, the answer is yes. This is one more layer of the Swiss cheese uh, that uh, decreases the amount of, of shedding uh, in the classroom uh, and decreases your risk of picking it up. Now, one thing that I think is also important for us to know is that everything we talk about is situational. And when the situation gets better, um, we as scientists will uh, always reassess the um, conditions and can always then make new recommendations. So a lot of the consternation people have been having about 
going back to masking, this is not forever. This is for the mid, in the midst of places that are having surges. Uh, and uh, this is one of the ways to help us get through this. So it's very important to think about where you are, what's going on, and to do everything we can to help us get through this difficult period as we're getting people back to school. Mm -hmm.